Hello YouTube, YouTube subscribers. Um, today we're going to be doing a species profile on Cyphophorus maculatus, and that is the uh, platy. Now the platy is one of the staple live bearers in the aquarium hobby. Uh, it comes in numerous different variations, as you can see here. This is only a very small handful of the hundreds and hundreds of variations there are. Now, the platy is not a difficult fish to keep. It's a good beginner fish, but I would strongly recommend avoiding platies and most air live bearers if you have soft water or acidic water. Platies tend to need pH between 7 to about 8 and water with that is medium to hard. Uh, they absolutely struggle in soft water. It's something about the biochemistry of most of these uh, live bearers that they just don't handle soft water very well. But in terms of temperature, they're 20 to 26 degrees. So you might be able to get away with not having the heater on with these guys, especially if you're in a house with pretty stable temperature. And just like all live bearers that give birth, um, they're the temperature affects the development, affects the reproductive rate and uh, the development of the fry. The warmer it is, the uh, faster they develop and the quicker they grow. But consequently, if you develop them at really high temperatures, they won't live very long. Which is one of the reasons why when you buy plays at stores, don't expect them to last very long. Because usually the way how these guys are bred, they're mass produced, they keep females at a really high temperature. So they gestate really, really quickly, they give birth, and then those fry are grown at high temperature into adults, and then they ship them to a pet shop, and they end up living maybe about three, four months or so. So under normal conditions, usually the uh, gestation in these platies is about four to six weeks, and females, they can produce up to 80 fry or so. Usually you're not going to get that many fry per batch, because usually females don't get to that size, up the maximum breeding size for like these guys is actually three inches for females, two inches for males. Normally tend to see them be a bit smaller, 1.5 to 2 inches instead. And because of their size, you can keep these guys in a 10 gallon tank also. But unlike guppies, I wouldn't recommend keeping these guys in like a 5 gallon simply because they got a heavier body mass. And I don't think they have as efficient bodies as guppies also, so the splice tend to produce a bit more of waste. Also, because of their reproductive rate, they can pretty quickly crowd an aquarium. Despite the fact of them being cannibals, you might have to add some other type of fish to kind of keep their fry populations down. But because of the short lifespan of the um, fish they tend to buy from the store, you might want to try to keep some of those fry alive so they can kind of just replace the fish they bought from the store because the ones you grow at home, under the recommended temperatures that I give, they'll tend to live longer and be much healthier than the ones that were mass farmed. So um, another thing you want to do is, uh, if you actually want to produce healthy plants yourself, don't stick to strict breeding. Um, just buy a bunch of different types, let them all mix together, and you tend to produce healthier fish that way. The other problem with that is you can sometimes get fish that are a little off looking in terms of coloration. And over time what happens is, if you don't control their breeding, the uh, selective traits that they have in them tend to degenerate over time, and you eventually end up creating, kind of recreating the wild form of the fish. Which I'll show in the following slides. Now, the platies that you tend to see in stores, they're not really full platies, most of them. They're actually hybrids between uh, a few other species, but most of their genetics comes from maculatus in most cases. But as you can see here, like this red wag hyphen platy and this red wag hyphen sword tail, probably have a common ancestry to crossing sword tails and platies to create that phenotype. And our species that is often crossed with the platy is the uh, varietas platy. Now, with the common platy, you can easily tell it apart from a sword tail or from a rice platy just by looking at the body. Platy, you got this stocky, rather chubby appearance, while in the sword tail, you got a much longer, more graceful appearance. Plus, the male sword tails, of course, have the sword. Uh, and also, in the rice platy, the body is longer, locked, basically just the sword tail's body, also. And there's quite a few other species, also, but I won't be covering those because I don't really have much uh, knowledge about those other ones and they generally aren't seen. So um, in terms of tank baits, uh, the platy is completely placid. It's a good group fish. Um, what I'd recommend is you keep more males and females because the males, they tend to harass the females vigorously for uh, breeding. So we'll keep probably two or three females per male. And of course you can tell the males by looking at their anal fin. The male has a gonopodium here. The female has a fan-shaped anal fin. And um, if you don't want fry, you can just keep a group of males, but they uh, might try to, they get really desperate and they actually try to mate with each other, and sometimes with other fish. 
But if you have a group of males, they should probably they'll probably bug each other instead of bugging your other fish. Now I would highly recommend the play as a starting live bearer. But do keep in mind the quality of the store-bought fish is usually not that great. Remember to try to keep some of them alive, keep some dry alive, you can end up using breeding traps. Or you could uh, make sure your tanks are pretty heavily planted to ensure that some of the fry are surviving. Uh, if you want something for fry control, pretty good fish for fry control on plays would probably be stuff like uh, betas, uh, paradise fish, uh, bumblebee gobies, night gobies, gudgeons, uh, some of the smaller cichlids. They're pretty good at knocking down the uh, fry population of these guys, as well as bumblebee catfish. And pick this catfish. Uh, because of the play's body shape, it being short, fat, and chubby, you can actually keep it all uh, plays with uh, like Pictus, which uh, Pictus would normally swallow a slim bodied live bear that's within that one and a half to two inch range of size. So, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Please rate, comment, subscribe. Need more information in the uh, fly swallowing the end of this video.